Okay, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and good evening, participants. I'm sorry for the delay for a little bit. We're trying to fix some technical problems, but we're now to start. Um, welcome, participants from uh, Nippon Sports Science University. We have um, University of Southern Philippines Foundation. We have some from Rajamangala University of uh, Technology, Lana from King Mukut Institute of Technology, Latkarbang, and from Vietnam National University. Welcome to the first virtual international students presentation forum. Let's begin. So for now, we would like to hear our presentations of participants from Nippon Sports Science University, Japan. Uh, can we ask uh, the presenters for their university to please pop up? If you have your screen, you can show it now. Any assigned representative from uh, Nippon Sports Science University to introduce their university to us? Hello. We would like to know. Hello. Oh, hello, hello. Uh, oh, hello. Uh, probably it's me. So. Okay. Uh, yeah. um, and I don't have the screen, so I'm just gonna read it. Is that okay? Yeah, that would be fine. Okay. All right. So, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Kent Hongo, and I'm a student of Nippon Sports Science University. And I'm very glad that uh, we have this opportunity with all. So firstly, uh, I would like to introduce briefly about NSSU. So NSSU is known for uh, one of the best uh, sports university in Japan. Uh, we contribute to promoting and developing uh, physical education sports and to making our country and society worse by nurturing and mentally and physically a healthy student with outstanding character. Uh, you may know that uh, NSSU has produced many athletes 
uh, for international competition, uh, such as the Olympic Games and the Paralympic Games. So in total, our university students, including graduated students, got more than 130 medals in the Olympic Games. And about academic program of NSSU, uh, we have five facilities and 10, uh, 10 departments, such as sports science, sports management, and medical science, et cetera. Uh, these courses are taking place uh, in our two campuses, one is located in Tokyo, and the other one is in Yokohama, uh, which is Kanagawa Prefecture. And two main campuses provide an attractive learning environment for sports people and researchers alike. So as a student of NSSU, we have opportunity to seek our future goal. For example, after graduate, some students want to be a physical education teacher. Some are to be a professional athlete or work in the company. So that's because our profess, uh, professors and the staff in the uni, they are always helpful and kind to our students. So I'm really glad that I got into NSSU. So thanks again for joining this meeting. And this is all for my brief introduction about NSSU. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kentu, for your nice introduction of your university. At least we've learned something from your university. Now your friends, yeah, yeah. perhaps from Vietnam and from others will know, and from Thailand and the Philippines would know also what it is your university about. Thank you so much, Kentu. Yeah, and you're welcome. NSSU, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Open Sport Science University. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, we move on to a presentation of uh, KMITL. Do we have Dr. Chinibeth in the room? Yes, I, okay. think, I think we have a video or something. Okay, let me check on that. We got it. Maybe I, I can give a very short introduction for our school. Is it okay? Yeah, that, that, that would be fine. I, I think it's quite difficult to find the, <clears throat> the, the video. File. Okay, yes. um, I will read it. I, I think we prepared for a video, but for now, let me save some time. The school, our school is King Mungkot Institute of Technology, Latkabang. Latkabang is a district of one of the district in Bangkok, Thailand, a uh, short for KMITL or KMIT Latkarbang. This is a research and educational institution in Thailand. And it is situated in the district of Bangkok. And also this university consists of nine faculties so far, like this year, because they're adding some, maybe like two or three faculties. But um, for now, the university consists of nine faculties, including engineering, architecture, science, industrial education and technology, agricultural technology, information technology, food industry, liberal arts and medicine. So far um, this year, this uh, school has undergraduates, okay? The population for undergraduates got 5,500. 
And then for the postgraduates, we have 2,000 to 3,000 students. So this is a quite big university. And um, this university, it was established in 1960. Thank you so much for listening. Okay, thank you very much for sharing about um, KMITL. Now we move on to the next university that would be RMUTL. Are you here? Yes. Anyone from RMUTL? Ah, yes. Thank yes. you so much. Can you share also as to us your university now? Okay. Ha. Did you see it? Ah, uh, yes. Yes, we do. Okay. Um, okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am on behalf of Lachamangkala University of Technology, Lana Pisanulok. My name is Tong uh, Hatai Tongam Kam. I'm acting head of liberal arts, faculty of business administration and liberal arts. And I am a head of international relation at Lachamangkala University of Technology, Lana Pisanulo. Uh, today, I will talk about our university. There are, there, are, uh, there are three faculty in our university. First, faculty of engineering. The second is faculty of agricultural and science technology. And the third is faculty of business administration and liberal arts. Uh, for the Faculty of Engineering, we have uh, Mechanical Engineering, Electrical Engineering, Industrial Engineering. And for the Faculty of Agricultural and Science Technology, we have Plant Science, Fishery Science, Animal Science, Food Science, and Farm Agricultural Technology. For, uh, for my faculty, Faculty of Business Administration and Liberal Arts, we have Management, uh, Digital Business Technology, English for International Communication. For me, I, uh, respons I am responsible for English for International Communication Program, which is four-year curriculum. And uh, our university have about undergraduate student and diploma student for uh, about 2000 students and if you have more question if you have more information about my university you can contact me uh, from, <laughs> from 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 okay from this qr code if you are interested thank you very much Okay, uh, thank you very much, Ajahn Tong, Pitong, for that uh, introduction of your university. Now we move on to uh, USPF, the University of Southern Philippines Foundation. Any representative from USPF? Good evening, sir. Good evening okay. to everyone here with us in Zoom. Um, we will be presenting to you the AVP for our university, the University of Southern Philippines Foundation. Thank you. The USPF Lahog Campus. The campus is strategically located in Uptown Cebu City, making it very accessible to public transportation. The campus is safe, well-planned, attractively landscaped, and kept in good condition. The buildings are functionally constructed in relation to their use, and each meets all requirements of the current building code. CCTVs and fire safety mechanisms are strategically located to enhance the safety and security of the premises. The campus also boasts of a more than ample parking space. There are eight primary structures in the Lahog campus. Specifically, the Oscar Hereza building, which is the current administration building and home to the College of Teacher Education, Arts and Sciences. The Agustin Hereza Building, which is home to the College of Health Sciences Nursing Department, 
College of Computer Studies, College of Engineering and Architecture, and the School of Law. The Heriberto S. Hueco Building, which is home to the Senior High School Department, College of Health Sciences Pharmacy Department, and the College of Social Work. The Beatriz D. Jereza Hall is the home of the Junior High School Department. The Sanson Memorial Hall houses the Elementary Department and the School of Business Management, Tourism and Hospitality Management Building is home to the SBM THM Cluster. The Rizal Hall houses the Graduate School and Office of Philanthropy and External Linkages and the VR Gonzalez Hall houses the TESTA office, the Learning Resource Center, and the Medical and Dental Clinic. To ensure delivery and access to quality education for our learners, the La Hogue campus features campus-wide Wi-Fi connection, the Learning Commons, dedicated libraries for elementary, high school, and college, a state-of-the-art computer laboratory, also known as the iLab, equipped speech laboratories, nursing simulation rooms, SBM boutique rooms, a motor pool for the engineering department, and laboratories specific to the colleges. A playground for the young learners is also located near the elementary building. The Dr. Ronald R. Duterte Theater for the Performing Arts and the Eladio Villa Memorial Gymnasium, which are used for institutional events, are located in the La Hogue campus. The Agustin Jereza building also features a VIP room and is equipped with solar panels at the rooftop to reduce building operating costs. The home of the Panthers, the Eladio Villa Memorial Gymnasium, is located in the La Hogue campus. In addition, the campus also has well-maintained covered and open basketball courts, a covered volleyball court, a beach volleyball court, and a vast open field for soccer and track and field. The La Hope campus also houses the Learning Resource Center, which is a TESTA-accredited training center and assessment center. Pre-pandemic, the students of LRC operate a coffee shop dubbed as the USPF Central Cafe, located within the premises of the university. The campus also has multiple housing options for its students and personnel. The USPF dormitories have air-conditioned and non-air-conditioned rooms with 24-hour security and free Wi-Fi access. To address the current pandemic, the university also has a designated isolation room for suspected COVID-19 cases. The USPF Administration and Faculty The University of Southern Philippines Foundation envisions itself as a 21st century transformative learning environment of global lifelong learners. As such, USPF Lahug boasts of highly qualified teachers and admin personnel, whose commitment is also in keeping with the university's mission to a value-laden quality education that nurtures ethical, creative, competent, and socially responsive individuals. Each one conscious of their responsibilities and contributions to the achievement of the university's goal of transforming into a dynamic, high-tech, high-touch learning organization in keeping with global standards in education and workplace requirements. The USPF Curriculum Academic-wise, the university provides its students with well-equipped laboratory facilities and fully functional libraries to augment learning. Specific laboratories are designated for biology, chemistry, physics, computer, technology and home economics, and speech. Various services are in place to assist students with our concerns, including admissions program, students' affairs, students' discipline, 
co- and extracurricular activities, guidance services, health services, and security services. USPF is a proud recipient of these national awards from PACOCOA. First school in Region 7 granted Level 3 accreditation for elementary. First school in Region 7 granted Level 3 accreditation for high school. And the first Lockton Legacy Award on the account of the team of our IT students who bested the best university IT teams from all over the country as national champion for the creation of an environmental software program that can be used by the LGU in the timely and effective collection and disposal of garbage. Graduates of the university can attest that the program of studies is relevant to the needs of the community and the society that the school serves. The instructional process is directed toward a holistic development of students. Co-curricular activities are given a proportionate role in the overall academic program. Social orientation and community involvement are essential aspects of every USPN student life. The institution exerts efforts at knowing and understanding the socio-physical and cultural environment of its partner communities, which is used as a framework in the formulation of its outreach programs for the community. USPF has a strong partnership with its selected communities, including the local government units of Cordova and Cebu City, to mention some. The university also has partnerships with several notable non-governmental organizations including SOS Children's Village Cebu, Visayas Inc., Philippine Mental Health Association, AmeriCares Foundation, World Vision, and USAID's Youth Alliance. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Anton Anton Joy, for representing your university in um, that presentation. And I think it's a teamwork, although you are the ones presenting for you representing your university for that um, part. And um, that's the five universities. We're so sorry that uh, we didn't uh, check. We are only 100 participants now. We're trying to check. I'm asking already the, the, the team to try to move up the numbers. Uh, however, we will be posting this on YouTube so everybody can uh, participate and chat there. Maybe you can get to know more each other since this is just the first time and it's it's the very first time. Uh, this presentation actually is the idea of um, Dr. Uh, Yamaguchi from Japan. Uh, he asked us if we could do some presentations of students because his students had this um, exercise done. And I said, oh, that's a good idea. We can top up with other students from different parts of the world since we already also have connections with some different universities. So that's what we um, um, did. And thank you very much, Dr. Yamaguchi for um, the initiative of this part, although we are very sorry that not all of our students can participate. However, uh -huh. this is recorded, 
So mm-hmm. we will be posting this on YouTube and I think they can participate and uh, do more of the talking and chatting and getting right. to know more in the mm-hmm. chat uh, area on the YouTube uh, account that we right. will be using. Mm-hmm. So we're really sorry for that. We didn't check um, the platform. We thought it's it's up to 5,000 um, part. Um, we didn't know that it's just only 100 because last time we used... 500 participants is okay. I didn't know what happened now. <laughs> That's why we, <laughs> we didn't check. So anyway, thank you so much for, for that one. So for this time, we will go to breakout rooms and we will get to know more each other. Uh, this breakout rooms will be very short. Um, we will be asking some of you to introduce yourselves. Um, so we will put you, since we are only few, we will put you to breakout rooms to get to know each other a little bit. Um, uh, if, Doc Andy, excuse yes. me. I think we still have Vietnam school. Are they finished? Oh yeah, sorry, sorry. Yes. Sorry, yes. <laughs> you okay. missed out me. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah, we, we go back to, okay. to Vietnam. Um, Vietnam National University, Hanoi. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you owe me a lot today, Andy. Okay. Yes, I do. Um, hello, everyone. I'm so sad that my students cannot join yet to this meeting. So I would just, uh, yeah, on behalf of all my students, I would just say a couple of things um, about Vietnam. Just let me share the screen. No? I'm not sure. Could anyone see my screen? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So my students are still outside and still waiting to come in this meeting. Uh, yeah. So, so anyway, um, uh, so on behalf of, of Ernst, just um, so happy to meet you all here. And I could see a lot from Philippines, from Japan, and from Thailand as well. And, and hello from Hanoi, Vietnam. So we are from International School, a part of Vietnam National University. And um, just a quick uh, presentation and just a quick uh, brief information about our university. And we are um, the largest university in Vietnam. And we yeah, have been established from a long time ago. And we have, yeah, because we are the biggest, so we have the highest number of students and teachers as well. Yeah. And um, we also have different university and effort schools uh, and institute. Yeah. And we are a part of that. We are, we, we are here. Yeah, BNU International School. And we are also so proud to be uh, in, in 1,000 schools um, in terms of rankings as well. So um, that's also something that we're really proud of. And this is our school and we have uh, we were established in 2002 and formerly we were like Vietnam Russia International School, but now we um, offer own training programs entirely in English. Yeah, so um, yeah, um, so that, that's something really unique about our university because we are the only one uh, offering all courses in English. And um, this is the image of our campus and this is a num- some numbers of our schools. I'm not going to into details to save time for everyone. I just want to say that um, today um, we present the Bachelor in English Language, one of the new uh, Bachelor um, program that we started last year. And um, we really hope that they can join us later to give the presentation of our uh, Vietnam sports uh, to join with the others as well. Uh, so um, yeah, so basically we have a number of uh, bachelor degrees and also um, master degrees as well. And we always welcome international students students to our school. That is something um, we also have Japanese students here. Uh, one of them also in my class. Um, so we really hope that uh, in the future we can have 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 chance to cooperate and welcome all of you to our school. Uh, these are some pictures of our university. Um, and yeah, we have couples of partnership as well. And uh, sorry, let me uh, pause this one. 
Yes, we have research groups and we also welcome school, uh, professor, visiting professors. So um, if you like to have more information about that, just feel free to go to our website at the end of this uh, presentation. I'm not sure why my presentation doesn't go long as well. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so again, I uh, really welcome all of you and I hope that we can have more time to get to know each other and uh, get more information. So you can go to our website. I will post that into our meeting chat. I'm not sure my computer crashed already. <laughs> so again, uh, thank you everyone. And I hope that my students can come in to uh, deliver the presentation later. So that's my, our website. Okay, so thank you everyone. So hope you have a good uh, night with our event. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Van, for introducing your university. Thank you I'm so for sorry missing me. <laughs> no I'm, worries, no worries. Yeah. I'm, I'm a bit worried because of what happened today, but I'm still thankful that some of you uh, were able to join. Um, we hope that we yeah, could. I think do... patient to, to join. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is, since this is the first, everybody's like alarmed and. Uh, since it's a virtual one also, it's quite difficult to um, manage a little bit. So, but, but I thank you so much for joining. Now let's try to get to know more. Um, if, however, I will be putting you into groups, but if you see that you are all in, in the same group as from different countries, uh, I think you have to move. So let's try this. Um, in Tito. so for the meet and greet, um, I would like you to state your name. Uh, your university and country, and maybe you introduce a little bit or use some adjectives to introduce yourself, just a little bit so that we will get to know. So we will put you into smaller groups so that we will get to know someone at least in, in this uh, group. Um, I think I just open groups and then you will move to your uh, groups. So group one will be Miss Van, group two will be uh, Doc Chinabeth, group three would be is. Uh, um, Ruth here. Yes, I'm here. Okay, you will be group four and group five, Eunice. I will be in group six. Okay, so um, six groups, I guess I think. We still have from Japan. Professor from Japan. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you will choose where to go. <laughs> I think that's, that's that's better. So that if if all of you are from Japan in group one, you have to move out and move to another group so that you will encounter also other friends in here. Okay. We will be having. Um, it's ten minutes. Okay, fifteen minutes. Now it's, it's 10 minutes to seven. How many minutes do we have? 15 10, minutes. 15 minutes. Okay. Uh, which break? Our room, I go out again. Uh, you can go to group one, two, six. I am group two. Right. I can choose any group, right? Yes, you can choose any group from one to six. Okay, thank you.
So is it open now? One is that, yes. I can move you. I will be in group two. Yes. Please let me know if you cannot go to any group so I can move you. Um, manually. Ruth, what's your room again? Four, I think. Okay, for those who cannot move to, to any rooms, let me know so I can move you to a room where you want to go. <laughs> Uh, can you move me to the room one? The, uh, VNU present. Oh, we have already from VNU. Very nice to room one. Okay, there you go. Okay, for those who cannot join other groups, maybe you can start introducing yourself in this group. <laughs> maybe you can turn on your cameras and... I still can see some names that are not in the groups in here.
Hello, sir. Hello, everyone. <laughs> it's um. good to know to see you. Uh, I hope you started already and getting to introduce yourselves. Maybe you can turn on your cameras so you can show your faces as well. <laughs> I think some of your friends here moved already to other groups because they came in late. So my name is Andy and I'm um, working here in Bangkok hmm. with uh, KMITL. So have you done introducing yourself already? No, not yet. Okay. And um, my name is Koki Otomo. And my university is Nippon for Science University. And country is Japan. And I belong to gymnastics club. Oh, gymnastics. Thank you. Anyone here, others uh, who love gymnastics? <laughs> Jeremy, how about you? Jeremy? Um, oh, oh, sorry, um, sorry. I am Jeremy Ariliano, a first year genetic engineering student from USP after. Uh, genetic engineering. Mm. Yes, sir. The engineering who I know masters the surveying field. Right. Oh, so you can survey also how long <laughs> will 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 um We only learn a survey, only survey lots and lands. Okay. Any others? I think she, I think sir Ashley wants to introduce herself too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Volunteering Ashley, yeah. Hey. Hi, good evening. I'm Ashley Didi Striza, a first year genetic in Bachelor of Science in Genetic Engineering in USPF. Also genetic engineering, right? Yeah. Yes, sir, we're classmates, sir. Ah, great. Ashley and okay, anyone else who would like to introduce themselves? Hi, uh, good evening. Oh, okay. Oh, hello there. Oh. <laughs> um, I'm Haidnor, a first year student taking up tourism management from USPF. Tourism management. So you're all from different um, majors, right? Yeah, different departments. Yes, sir, but we know each other from the same, I know, meet from mutual friends. Ah. Yes, sir. Also, all of you also from USPF, you don't know each other, right? So it's, it's good sense. to get to know also from this this platform. And also from, from, how about from Japan? Do you all know? I've heard from Dr. Yamaguchi that we're all 70 to join tonight, but I'm so sorry. Do you all know each other? Koki? Sorry, Mama, please. Uh, do you know each other, uh, all of you um, who joined tonight? Um, I don't know. Sorry. Um, ah, so that's nice. Um, also, to get to know them. Student, um, I don't know what to boom. Ah, so that's a nice way also to get to know them. <laughs> okay, so I, I thought like all from this group knows each other, but it's it's a good thing also to get to know your friends. Um, so you are all from different um majors, also even in sports. How about we have? I can't read Japanese. So. <laughs> yeah. huh? Japanese major sports. Um, and soccer and baseball is major sports in Japan. Oh, major sports. Excuse me, sir. Can I ask something from Koki, sir? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you should um, get um, to know each other. Um, can I ask you, Koki? Um, <laughs> Do you know any Filipino words? Because I watch a lot of blogs um, in schools in Japan and there are a lot of Filipino students there. Do you know any Filipino words? Philippines, what? 
Okay. Filipino words. Do you do you know any? Sorry, I don't um understand. Uh, do you know any Filipino words? What words and vocabulary? Ah, yes. Um, um, I'm sorry, I don't know vocabulary. Um, I don't know. Um, great to sorry. Um, if um you can um, teach me, <laughs> and great um language. Um, because um. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's your it's your chance to teach. You can learn from each other's languages. <laughs> right. This is the time for you to um learn something from different um countries. Or maybe if you have other questions that you want to ask, uh you can. Jeremy and Ashley, <laughs> and we have, uh, who's this? Uh, I, I, we haven't heard from you yet. We have another guy here. They're quiet. I think it's it's really difficult to 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 form and gather people for this kind of platform <laughs> it's, oh, English. it's yeah. oh yeah oh, as well as that one language difficulty perhaps also but it's it's a good way and um we think that this 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 forum also is a good way to get to know other students from different countries that's why when dr yamaguchi introduced us like uh, we have students want to present their exercises they created, and I said, "Wow, that's exciting! Show us, and we will um, we will um, um, learn from it." And then we also integrate other culture from different. So later, also, you will learn culture from different parts that they will be sharing. Although, of course, we learn a lot from Japanese movies. Uh, yes, sir, I know. Searches. I know a word from another Japan. Okay. Gomenasai and I share. Konnichiwa. I only know it from ano, animes. From anime, yeah. Oh, because yes. it's really popular, even the comics before, and then now it's on digital. I want to so, know other country and greet. Um, anime is also popular in Japan. Oh, yes, Japan too. What is the current, uh, what is the most popular uh, no, anime there right now? One Piece. Uh, One Piece and... I think actually, sir, uh, no, watch One Piece. Actually, hmm. diba? Recently, and Kimetsu no Yaiba. Do you know Kimetsu no Yaiba? I know. Um, Hunter Hunter. Isn't it pronounced Hunter X Hunter? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Is it Hunter X Hunter or Hunter Hunter? Hunter Hunter. This, this. Do you know? Uh, no. I don't. Is it a uh, no, Goku? Sorry, mama, please. Is it ano Goku? Gong, gong. Goku. Goku. Ah, Goku. Yes, yes, I know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> super, super, ma. Super Saiyan. Super Saiyan. It is very, it is a very old anime. And ano fairy tale. Right. So we're almost up with our time. So I think we're just waiting for a few minutes and then we will all be back to the... So if you want to get to know more, maybe you can get... Um, um, if you have Facebook or something, you can share later. 
um, you can chat more if you want to. Okay, so I think we have to go back to the main room and wait for the others. Oops, and we are back. Welcome to the main class. Okay, uh, Dr. Andy. Yes. Uh, can, can I ask one minute from Miss Miss Shoko? Go because, ahead, go ahead. Because she was talking and then suddenly it was stopped. Oh, okay, you can. Miss Shoko, where are you? Can you? Miss Shoko? Uh, okay, I think. Ah, okay, here. Miss Shoko, could, could you answer that for uh, one minute? I think she's shy. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Miss Shoko, okay? You can continue. We all listening. <laughs> Miss Shoko? I think she doesn't want it to. Okay. Maybe a little bit shy. Yeah, yeah. I think it's it's a little bit difficult to force people to talk and open up um, yeah. in this form. And yeah. maybe soon we will have a, a real face-to-face -face presentation someday. And we hope we could meet that and we can do that. Okay. Okay. So thank you very much, everyone. For I, I hope you learned something from some friends. You gained some friends tonight, and you were able to share something and learn something. Although time is really not enough, but at least we give you some time to. Okay. So let's move on to the main presentation. Mm. So that's meet and greet. So we have on our list of presenters uh, for the the program. We will be having the Nippon Sports Science University. I think they will show us uh, an exercise they created. And we all watch and then try to make comments and share what we think about uh, what they uh, prepared for us. Thank you, Andy. Andy, can you hear me? Yes, 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 uh, doctor. Yeah, um, well, see, uh, before that, I'd like to just, you know, um, well, thank uh, everybody, you know, for, you know, for their participation here and the, um, yeah, I like to. We like to show, uh, you know, the video of the uh, of the exercise uh, which our students made. And first of all, um, well, I like to just share the video with you. So just see. Uh, hopefully, oops. Oh wait. J just wait a little bit. Okay. Hello everyone, my name is Mike. Today I'm going to show you guys how to dance with Yumi. There are 10 movements. Okay, wait. So can you can you see the video? A while ago, yes, but it's out. Oh, the the no no sound. There is there is we we. Okay. Okay. Right. Hello everyone. My name is Mai. Today I'm going to show you guys how to dance big near me. There are ten movements. So the first, I want you to practice without music. And then next, let's dance with music, All right? It's not difficult, so don't worry, you can do it. Let's get started. The first movement is that working, right? Working four counts. One, two, three, four. And you're crouching your body. 
and strengthen your arms. Spread your arms like this. Do it again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Second movement. Cross your arms and touch your shoulder and making a T. Okay, and when you touch your shoulders, you bend your knees like this, and when you're making a T, you stand up. Right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Third movement is a little bit difficult. Okay, when you finish T, this posing, touch your shoulder, touch your shoulder, touch your shoulder, up, up, down, down. Do it again. One, two, up, up, down, down. All right. When you practice a lot, you can do it first. So don't worry. First movement, it's twisting your body. Okay? Your body is like a robot. Imagine that you're a robot and you make sure your arms go straight, not like this and not like that. All right? And then twist four counts. Two, three, four. And when you finish four counts, do it first. One, two, three, four. Fifth movement is shaking your body. Okay, make sure that you're going to be relaxed. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Relax. Okay, so far so good. You done the half of movements. All right. Sixth movement is that you're clenching your body like this and your arms like a snake. All right, one more time. Crouch your body and your arms gonna be like a snake. Okay, seventh movement is you finish this pausing and your arms going to be like this and you stretch your side of your body and bound twice. One, two. And then go other way, bend your knee and bounce twice. Okay, do it again. One, two, bounce twice, three, four. One, two, bounce twice, three, four. Good job. This movement is you finish this position and just turn around. Turn around. Finish. Nice movement is stretch your knee. Stretch your knee. One, two, stretch your knees. One, two. One more time, stretch your knees. One, two, stretch your knees. One, two. And finally, it's the last one. When the song says, big new me. And when your arms go like, big new me. Imagine that you're like a tree. Okay, so far so good. You remember all the movements? I hope so. So the next, let's practice with music. Let's get started. Ready? Here they come. Working. One, two, three, four. Crutch your body. String some. One more time. Close your arms and making a T. Side, side, up, up. Side, side, down, down. Twisting your body. First step. Shaking your body. Relax. Relax your body. Like snake. Bond two times. The other way. Side your body. Turn around. Stretch your knee. One, two. Stretch your knee. Good job, everyone. So, Andy. Yes. Um. So, um, you know, um, one of my students, Shoko, uh, just see, I would like to, uh, would, you know, uh, like to explain just a little bit about this video. Okay. Okay, great, great. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so, Kanobe san, please. Hi. Mm. 
Hi. Hi. Hello there, Shoko. <laughs> <laughs> so, di ka ma malam <laughs> salamat ko. Sinchao. I'm Shoko. I'm junior of Nippon Sports Science University. I'm going to introduce and explain about one minute exercise. Um, this exercise is just one minute. So I think everyone are able to remember easily and enjoy it because it has very pop music. So this ex exercise has seven movement mainly fast walking and stretching chest exercise. So this is walking four times, small your body and big plus motion. In addition, hold and hold and small body and open your chest. It have two point. One point is arm swinging, swing and walking a big. Another point is split arms widely. Uh, when you split arms, set your arms uh, at the same height as shoulder. So second, changing arms. This is this exercise is kind of like brain exercise because it has complex swap arms motion. And those bend both your arms to left and right upward, left and right again, and down. So this, this is order. The point is counting the order and keeping straightening arms. This arms um, motion needs to practice a little bit. Third is twisting body. Uh, you can lose up hip when your body swap left and right, set both and uh, both of your legs in the same di direction. This movement is twice. First time is slowly, and the second time is faster. First shake, first exercise, uh, shake your body. Uh, you stretch your stomach and back, and loosen up stiff body. Uh, the point is bend your knees when you shake your body to, to, front, to front and back and have a big motion and relax. Don't try too hard. So first exercise is bending your body in both ways to straight both sides of your body. The point is bend the body and knees to 90 degrees, 19 degrees. So, and straight, straight arms in the distance. So six, six exercise, knee stretch. The point is painting attention to stretch back of knees. Last is take a breath. You can get to relax. The point is stretch your arms to upward and both side of, both side of a, a deep breath. So after taking a place, one minute exercise is done. So thank you for listening to my one minute exercise introduction. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Shoko. Are there any questions or suggestions or comments on the exercise you may share with um, the presenters? Well, uh, Shoko, can I call you? Kana uh, Kawanobe, Kawanobe Sama, Arigato Sosaimas. <laughs> Thank you, Arigato Sosaimas. So, what is the inspiration you know, for you? Can any school shoot any topic, right? And for your school, right? Because you are the Nippon School of Sport, right? So, you choose the exercise, you know, physical activity that you want to share. Sorry for train, <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah. What is, what is your, you know, your main inspiration? Why do you want to share this exercise? Why do you want me to do exercise for me? Uh, because exercise is good for our health. 
So when you when when we exercise, so feeling is good. So have a positive thinking. I I think. So yes, this is why reason. Thank you. Arigato. So Andy, can okay, I say something? Yes, yeah, yes. Um, well, the um, Shoko just made really excellent explanation, and the um, because you know uh, because we have you know so much trouble for COVID nineteen now, and we you know are just see um, you know um, we just see. Um, you know, tend to uh, stay at home, uh, you know, rather than going out so that we need to do some exercise. So what we think we thought was, that, you know, probably it's really nice idea to scatter the, the idea of easy exercise, not only in Japan, but also out of Japan. Yeah. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Right, thank you very much. Yeah, I, I believe so also because we are all stuck in our, our nook, our place. So we need also to stress a little one minute would be nice with the presentation. It's really great to stress your, instead of just concentrating on focusing on screens. Thank you so much for that. And thank you also for uh, confirmation and questions, Anand. Are there any comments or anything you want to say uh yes sir so um, yes about the exercise i think uh it was actually quite a great idea that um miss shoko shared that one minute exercise it's not only very convenient because it's only done in one minute but i think it's also very timely because as uh professor yamaguchi mentioned earlier uh, he did say that um, and, uh, due to the current uh, new normal that we're experiencing right now with COVID, um, I think it's uh, only reasonable that we do a few stretches here and there to uh, help us with uh, coping up with the current uh, circumstances that we have right now. So yeah, I think uh, it was actually a uh, very nice of Miss Shoko to share the exercise today. Okay, thank you, Katrina, for your comments. Are there anything else you uh, from other participants? I thought they will ask questions like, how did you think of that? Like, it's quite difficult. <laughs> of course, I think of that. But anyway, um, thank you for your, if you have any other questions and comments, maybe we have more, uh, do we have more uh, um, exercises as this, uh, Dr. Yamaguchi? Yes, we have see um, another exercises, and so what we are thinking about now is that see uh, we would upload, you know, other videos, you know, uh, more videos uh, in uh, on YouTube, and so that I can, you know, give you information for that, and please, um, you know, give comment or questions for for the videos, please. Okay, thank you very much. Um, yes, so. They have prepared many exercises, just, just one sample, so we can put the comments also on their YouTube account. And right. we also share our YouTube accounts for our presentation, so we will all share each other's comments and ideas, so we will right. learn. So this is actually a portal of students helping each other to develop and be better in presentation and doing some other things, not only through presentations, but in many other aspects also of uh, uh, student life. So yes, so uh, you will be expecting, uh, we will be posting this. So we will be getting also your um, email addresses, perhaps. We will be creating some teams as we also distribute your certificates later. So we will get your, uh, by the way, for those who are here, maybe you will be out later because of the internet connection. Maybe we would like you to please type your name, your uh, uh, university and your email address so we could send you your uh, certificate for attending tonight uh, on the chat box. So- I need right now, right? I can't- Yes, have. now, because uh, we don't know the internet connection. Perhaps some of you will be out later. At least you will have your name already as, as there. So uh, we could get what, your email address, what? your name, 
uh, mm -hmm. your university and your email address mm -hmm. so that we can get uh, connections also. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Okay, so that is for the Nippon Sports Science University Japan. Thank you very much for your exercise presentations. Thank you, Shoko. Uh, thank you, um, Anan. And thank you, Katrina, for your inputs also. So moving on, we move to Thailand with Anan and Kim ITL. Uh, wait, first I have to finish writing my email. Can it okay. be my <laughs> university email or just my personal email? Uh, you can choose any. Oh yeah, my personal email. Uh, all right, all done for me. Okay, and it's your turn. <laughs> Representing KMITL Thailand. Yeah. So can you, anyone see my screen? Yes, you can see, right? Starting, yes. Yes. So for this class, right, it is the International Student Presentation Forum for Global Educator Networking, right? This is your company, your organization. So hi, everyone. My name is Anand Guilokshai. I'm the representative, the only one student yeah, for this today, right? For the Who team. gets in? <laughs> they cannot get in. <laughs> yeah, there is only 100 students, right? And I'm the only one, yeah. I don't know where's my friend, yeah. <laughs> Uh, wish me luck. So I study in Bachelor in Business Administration year two and semester two. So before that, I have to get you in a moon first. So I have to open, you know, some music. Uh, yeah. So for this class, I, I want to show you about the, you know, fusion food in Thailand. So this is the Thai cultures. Uh, I, Professor, yeah, let's start. So I don't know which, you know, which, you know, part of the cultures I want to represent. So I think that, hey, I'm hungry, right? Is anyone hungry today? It's almost, you know, seven o'clock. I haven't eaten lunch and dinner yet. Yeah, really same. <laughs> so I want you to get the taste of what is Thailand, you know, for you. So the topic that I want today is the not just food, but the fusion food. For about myself first, my name is Anand Guilokshai. I'm now in second year now. I'm age 21. So the background about myself, why is the fusion food, right? So my father is actually Chinese, Chinese immigrant. And my mother is Thai. So I'm the 50% right, Chinese and 50% Thai mixed blood. But I'm born and live in Bangkok City all my life. So I speak more, you know, English and Chinese fluently. Ni hao. Yeah. So Bachelor in Business Administration from King Mungkut Institute of Technology. My hobby is read comics, right? And watch movie and also working out. And my dream after I graduate, I want to work in the logistic industry after graduation and travel around the world. And after that, let's start with a quick question. Do you recognize any of the Thai dish, you know, Thai recipe for the cuisine? How many did you know? For once, I know, you know, pineapple fried rice, you know, Pad Thai, this very famous, right? And Tom Yam Kung, and also Som Tam. Did anyone know? I want to you to interact with me anywhere I can. Right? Uh, only know about the fried rice and the fried prawn. The rest are like very foreign to me. Wow. Well, yeah, today it's amazing, but you know, there is so many, this is the, what we call the traditional Thai, you know, Thai that have been existing for over the century now. But today's topic, I want to talk about the history of Thai food from the past until the present day. You know, how is that evolution, that development from the hundred years ago until today in the 21st century. Let's start with the concept of what is the fusion food? So fusion food is a food that combines the element of different country culinary tradition, right? To create something entirely new and unique from their previous recipe. This is not just the modern trend, but there is a record that the people of Thailand 
mixing different food cultures together from the past through trading and cultural exchange. And even today, the new fusion dish are being invented by skillful chefs and cookers of Thailand. The history of Kingdom of Siam. You know, Siam is the you know, own word of Thailand, right? After we changed the name for 100 years ago for some you know, reason. Thailand, previously known as Kingdom of Siam, is the country located between the heartland of the Southeast Asia. It is location at the center of the trade route between India and China has attracted many foreigners from around the world to migrate here. They bring with them many cultures and traditions into the land of golden field. And over the century, various tribes of Thai cuisine start to develop among many ethnic groups. So here's the location of Thailand, you know, at least if someone didn't know, yeah, Thailand here, situated, you know, here, Vietnam, right, Cambodia and Philippines, in the center of the heartland between India and China, we are the melting pot of cultures. So in Thailand, I want to start with the, right, this is the flag of Thailand and our, you know, religions predominantly, we are the Buddhist and also we have, you know, we are the monarchy. Do you see this face on news? I don't know. You might see him, you know, in Germany, in everywhere, but we're not going to talk about, you know, the situation in Thailand today because we're going to talk about the food, right? In Thailand, yeah, we have Muay Thai. We have our national animal is the elephant also, and we have all types of food, right? We are the most exported, you know, our main product is rice, right? We are the most, you know, top five most exported rice, you know, in the country, in the whole world. So the most famous dish of Thailand, right? So first we start with the Thai Chinese food. Did you know that Chinese make up the largest immigrant minority in Thailand for 14%, right? And the Chinese culture has been the most influential on the Thai cuisine since the founding of Siam Kingdom. Now, many Thai are adapting from the ingredient of Chinese origin, such as, you know, quit the oak, noodle, and thao man gai, right, from Hainan chicken. Pad Thai, did you know that is the, you know, most famous dish in Thailand? Stir fried rice noodle dish is typically made with the rice noodle, shrimp, and tofu, peanut, and scrambled egg. It's actually, it's a recent creation in 1930 to reduce the rice consumption during World War II food shortage. So Thai people invented, you know, Pad Thai. It's so much cheaper and it's delicious also. It has since become the most famous dish of Thailand. And Kui Tiao is the rice noodle from imported from China, I believe, right? Noodle also come along with the Chinese merchant during the Sukhothai era. But afterward, this adapt into the food to suit the local ingredient and their taste. Also, we have Thai India fusion food. India is another country with dominant influence in the Thai cultures, such as religions, you know, of Hindu and Buddhism, also the language, also and the literature and food. Many notice that Thai curry are very different from Indian curry because. Several ingredients are changing over the year to adapt to the taste of Thai people. Thai curry versus you know, India curry. Thai curry is quite different from India curry, if you know, and also Japanese right, curry. Its main ingredient is coconut milk. Thai curry does not use the curry powder and there are four kinds of Thai curry. There is a red curry and green eh? and masaman and panang curry. Whereas in India, it's curry with the roti or naan bread. The Thai eat them with the stream rice. Such as masaman curry, right? India spice such as cinnamon, uh, cardamom, and clove are combined with the local flavor of chili pepper and lemongrass to make masaman curry paste. And in 2011, CNN Go ranked the masaman curry as the number one most delicious food in the world right, top 50s. Yeah, also with green curly, right? The last one that I talk about is the Thai and Western European influence. 
nations such as Portuguese, right, and English and America influence Thai dish to create the Thai Western style recipe. The later era of the European colonization in the 18th and 17th century, Western country also played a huge role in evolving Thai cuisine to the introduction of new ingredients from the new world of America and the new cooking method. Such as we have dessert of Tong Yip, Tong Yot, and Foy Tong. This recipe is actually from the Portuguese, right? Portuguese immigrant during the 17th century. Such as the record is by uh, Mrs. Maria Guillaume de Pina during the Ayutthaya Kingdom period. The Thai version improvised the recipe by using the coconut milk instead of cow milk because of Thai uh, lactose intolerant, right? And we don't have a lot of cow. We use coconut milk. And spaghetti pat kimau, this is my favorite also. It's combining the Italian right, spaghetti with the distinctive ingredient of Thailand. Stir fry noodle dish made from the seafoods such as shrimp and oyster with soy sauce and fish sauce with a fresh black pepper pot and holy basil. It's the perfect blend of sour and spicy net to give its rise to become the favorite among Thai people. Also the last one, American fried rice. This is the Thai invention, but we credit it to American. This is the recent invention during the Vietnam War of 1970. Did you remember that? When the American, right? come to Thailand because we are the ally, right? Against communism. They introduced Thai to their, you know, favorite foods such as bacon and cheese and hamburger sausage. And Thai people, they didn't eat bread, right? We eat rice. So we adapt it to be, you know, fried with the rice and ketchup and pineapple. This is the most popular Western food option for many Thai restaurants and hotel. So the last one is the picture of modern Thai food in the 21st century that I want to show you. That what's the amazing creation, right? Invention that we create in the, you know, land of smile, land of golden field, such as, you know, cow soy, cowboy, hamburgers. This is the restaurant that I, you know, visit also, right? And rum, french fry at the bad motel. This is my favorite. Also, we have the, Fish shell pad kapau, right, from the baguette based of French, and also tom yam kung, uh, cheviche, and magadin. So, in conclusion, that I want to make is Thai cuisine is a harmonized marriage of Eastern and Western culture that have been influencing each other throughout the century for hundreds of years of trade and cultural diffusion. Thai people are very creative. They can adapt, you know, foreign recipe and transform them into something that entirely unique and delicious on their own. As the 21st century, you know, trend of globalization continue, many new dish will be invented from the talented Thai chef looking for to combine diverse culture and story into the plate for our enjoyment. So the thing that I want to make is there is a whole new world of taste and flavor waiting for you to be explored, you know, in Thailand. So what are you waiting for, right? Come visit Thailand anytime soon because we will be waiting for you, right? Visit Thailand now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Anand, for the fusion food you presented about Thai food. And are there any questions you might want to ask Anand? So, any question? Uh, question there, uh, can we have British? <laughs> British? What? <laughs> For uh, th Thailand food? A uh, free uh, taste. <laughs> yeah, he, he's joking, he's joking, Anand. Do you have some free taste, Anand? <laughs> no, I can send the test over to you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, someone did. Virtual. Yeah. So Virtual taste. The main purpose of this presentation is I want to show that Thailand is not just a unique, you know, one culture. It's the harmonized of Western and Eastern culture, right? 
many parts, many you know, country all over the world come to Thailand and bring with them cultures and the food is the history of Thailand that I want to make. So, right, there are so many stories to tell. And I'm hungry right now. <laughs> anyone want part Thai? Anyone want to eat? You know? <laughs> this in Thailand is you know 1 p.m. No, 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 it's 7, right? It's, um, it's night now, right? It's 19. Yeah. So, done all of it so I can, you know, eat my dinner. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of us also are hungry with the yeah. food you presented. So, are there yeah. any questions? Any? Or any comments? Lisa is from Thailand. You're welcome. You're welcome to visit Thailand anytime. You know, during COVID, Thailand is the, you know, dependent on the tourism industry so much, right? Account for 20% of the GDP. So when there is no tourists, you know, the local economy suffers so greatly. So, you know, help the local people, help mm -hmm, come to Thailand anytime. Uh, okay. I guess they're hungry enough already to speak. <laughs> so thank you so much for the fusion food, uh, Anan. Thank you. Okay, yeah. so let's move on to the next. Yeah, thank you so much. Now we have on our list. is um, the University of Southern Philippines Foundation. Any representative from USPF on culture? Yes, sir, Rowan. Okay. So in the Philippines, sports can be found anywhere in the streets, uh, inside the house, in community gymnasiums, in schools, and etc. The Filipino youth have always been active in sports, inspired by our national athletes. Pre-pandemic, ball game youth camps are always jam-packed. So the USPF is also known for its remarkable sports team, as you saw in our opening video. We give pride to the university as home of the Panthers, home of champions, who embody the core values of PIES, which stand for professionalism, integrity, excellence, and social responsibility. Today, we present to you the culture of the Philippines and three of its traditional sports that we believe also share the university's core values. Greetings of peace and welcome to the Philippine Islands. My name is Dana, the president of the USPF AV Music Society, together with Antoine, the president of the USPF Education Students Organization, Sarah, the president of the USPF Psychology Society, and Lawrence, the president of USPF Political Science Organization. We will be bringing you with us on a flight to the Pearl of the Orient Sea, starting with Lausanne. Magandang gabi sa ating lahat. This is flight 001 bound for Luzon. Luzon is the largest and most important island of the Philippines. It is the site of Manila, the nation's capital and major metropolis. Luzon is also known for its lost forest forest and rich habitat that includes vultures, lizards, and endangered species. It is also known to house the Tagalog, Ilocano, Pangasinenses, Pampanguenyo, Bicolano, Ilongo, and Waray ethnic groups.
The sport you can see on your screen is called Katintero, a traditional Filipino game. It is the most popular outdoor game played on a re rectangular grid drawn into the ground played by mo four or more players. It means block and catch in English and promotes team building which reflects the spirit of camaraderie of our fellow men. Luzon is an island full of festive activities and is also an ecotourism spot. Luzon will surely bring your heart and soul back into the wild. Ladies and gents, we have landed at the Mactan International Airport. Ayong Adlao, this is Flight 002 stationed at the Visayas Islands. Please prepare for takeoff. Visayas is an island stationed between Luzon and Mindanao. Apart from its rich culture, there are three concepts that describe the Cebuana personality. Espiritu Hanun, which is a belief in God, spiritual beings, and life after death. Garbo, the dignity and pride with which the Cebuana protects his or her sense of self-esteem. And Lumadnon, the love for one's family, origin, and community. Garbo, which talks about the Visayas dignity, can be seen in the sport Batolata, or in English, with the can. The game involves throwing a slipper at a can or a bottle, which one player, the Taya, attempts to guard. It is one versus the pride of many. Thank you for boarding Flight 002. The last flight for the Philippines is Flight 003. Come on, the last stop for the Philippine Island. 003 is stationed at Mindanao. Please buckle up and stay calm. Mindanao was heavily envelope and Visayan culture, from dress and worship to language and other aspects of culture. The image of Mindanao is linked with Islam. No small surprise there, considering that the largest and most powerful politics in pre-colonial Mindanao were Muslims. Now, you will surely miss the Philippine experience without tasting the rich flavors of the Mindanao region. Building in Mindanao's culture and identity and a way of life is some of the indigenous communities located on the island. It's carefully handcrafted, created Mindanao people. Each has its own different uses. Is the Philippine variation of the game Hopscotch. The players stand by the edge of a box and each throws the cue ball. Whoever succeeds in throwing the cue ball nearest to the play have agreed upon will play first, next nearest the second, and so on. Third out round, if they stand both deep. Thank you for flying with the USPF Airlines. We will be landing next in our destination code 8219547-3984. Okay, thank you very much, uh, USPF, uh, Dana, Anton, and Dorrance for representing your university really nice way you did uh, with dramatization and it's really nice to to see that kind of another type of presentation like that um are there any questions from the participants
Well, hello, I'm back. Oh, you're you know, back. Looking through my refrigerator to find something to eat. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, this we all is so many interesting, right? So fun, fantastic work. They try to simulate the flight simulator, right? At least we travel to which city again in Philippines? Rahong, right? City. Yeah, such a beautiful place. I want to visit someday. Great. Thank you. Right. As for the question, right? Mm -hmm. Or we, any comments, questions, or? I like that you are, you know, one of the national sport, right? Is throwing a slipper, throwing shoes at the can. <laughs> so many, you know, unique things about that. What is the most interesting thing about, you know, Rahong city? Just pick one that you want to represent your city of Rahong. Ah, Lahog. Lahog. Lahog, right. la sorry. <laughs> Lahog or Lahog? I, I don't even... <laughs> you don't know. Lahog. Yes. It's Lahog. Lahog. It's Lahog, ma'am. Um, sir, sorry. Yes. What, the, what is the greatest thing about your city? Um, I think um, in Lahog, the most prominent um, landmark is the IT park. It's where most um, call center buildings, um, BPOs are located. And it's, it's, it's really lively even at night. Call center building? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, great. Uh to add to what Antonio has said, uh, I think Lahog City, uh, Lahog is clearly located at the heart of Cebu City. So from the night, you can really see the uh, skyscrapers and the city lights from a distance. So yes, I think it's, although it's a uh, working industry there, you can clearly appreciate the view from above. So yes, that's uh, the one thing that we're proud of here in Lahog. Cebu City. Thank you. Wow, that's great also. Nice. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions? But anyway, I think we, if you have other questions, you can type them on the chat box and uh, they can try to um, uh, reply also. So please visit the chat box if there are questions there, suggestions, please go back and check. And um, Thank you very much, USPF, um, Dana, Anton, and Lawrence, and Sarah. Okay, and of course, the, the whole team, I know it's a group effort and team effort for this, this group. Thank you so much. Okay, now we move on to Vietnam National University, Hanoi. Yes, we are here. Uh, can you see our screen? Yes, we do. Okay. Uh, uh, we don't even... see you. <laughs> uh, actually, I turned my camera on. So can you see me? Oh, wait. I think I... Uh, can, can you pin the presenter? Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, can sorry. You? Yes, thank you. Okay, there we go. We have three presenters. Okay. Um, I think it's okay. Just, just keep. Uh, just start because you will appear when you start your voice. Yes. Yeah. No worries. Okay. So we will go from the south to the upper north, Vietnam. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so uh, good evening, everyone. We are students from the international school. It's a member school of Vietnam National University. And today we will talk about the closest relationship between sports and culture in Vietnam. And there are three members in our team is Nguyen Thu Ha, Phạm Hải Anh, and me, Nguyen Minh Ngoc. And 
Uh, so let's take a look at our main contents, starting with the way Vietnamese enjoy sports in daily life, and then is sports spirit appears everywhere. And the last is the relationship between sports and culture. So now I will invite Vui Phạm Hải Anh to talk about the first part. Thank you, Minh Ngọc, and I'm Vui Phạm Hải Anh. And let's start with the way Vietnamese people enjoy sport in daily life. Vietnam is a country with great sportsmanship, and we can see the country participate in many sport events from domestic to international, such as SC Game, World Cup, the League. People can often gather together in a hall or in a restaurant. Uh, you can see the screen. This is a picture of ADC Hoàng Xuân Vinh at Olympi Olympic Rio 2016, and he got the gold medal. People often gather together in a hall or in the restaurant, beer bar, street bar to work the mat, where only television or projector with a large screen is needed. The way Vietnamese people celebrate the victory of Vietnamese football team is also exceptional. When Vietnam won the runner-up position of U23 Asian Cup or reached the quarter final of Asian Cup, in Vietnam, people have a form called Đi Bao, a way celebrating a victory of the Vietnamese people. Everyone poured into streets together wearing red shirt with yellow star flag in hand and conical head in, on their head. We, from there, we can see that Vietnamese people have a strong passion for sport, especially people who like to watch football together, but often focus on men football. That does not mean sportsmanship does not appear in women. Sports spirit appear everywhere with every kind of people. Last love of sport that does not discriminate between young and old, boys and girls reason. Typically, girls from Sanchi in Guangling province participate in soccer in province sport festival. Now I will show you a video about Sanchi women play football in sport festival. No sounds hi, I know. Still, there's no sounds. Uh, sorry, can you hear the voice? No, no, no. Okay, I will play again. Yeah, yes, please. Can you hear it now? Yes, yes. Các hoa hậu Á hậu Hoàng Vũ Việt Nam tham gia một số hoạt động trải nghiệm văn hóa của đồng bào sáng trị, giao lưu bóng đá nữ, thanh niên, dân tộc sáng trị, xã hội động. Đây là những hoạt động nằm trong chương trình cùng hoa hậu chấp cánh du lịch Việt nhằm quảng bá văn hóa cảnh đẹp Quảng Ninh và lan tỏa thông điệp kia đến cộng đồng. Trong ngày tới, các hoa hậu Á hậu Hoàng Vũ sẽ trải nghiệm các danh thắng của tỉnh Quảng Ninh, trong đó có Vịnh Hạ Long, Bảo Tàng Thư viện tỉnh, núi Bài Thơ, khu di tích và danh thắng Yên Tử, khu du lịch Trà Cổ, khu di tích quốc gia đặc biệt Nhà Trần, khu di tích quốc gia đặc biệt Bạch Đằng và huyện Cô Tổ. The football tournament has been held annually since 2018. The player are all normal people, a major, the main job are farmers, small children. From that, it can be seen that the sports spirit of Vietnam people is powerful. But women players are already particular feature of the tournament. And the custom they wear when competing are even more special. They wear traditional clothes in this play, which is to wear skirt to play football. From there, we can see the national spirit through them. They have a the web. You can, you can see the screen. It is Sanchi. 
women wear scarf to tackle an interesting event that can only find in Bình Liêu football tournament. To read, come and know more about their custom. Football sport needs a lot of teamwork. We can increase their team spirit from all of the efforts mentioned. Feature, we can see that the spirit so solidarity of Vietnamese nation sport bring about cultural change over time and gender equality is one of the most effective change in people's mind. From two parts that I have present, you guys can see the passion for sport of, Viet of Vietnamese people. And now I will invite up to the next part, the relationship between sport and culture. Thank you, Hai. I'm now I will talk about the last part is the relationship between sports and culture. So the Vietnamese women's national football team has made a miracle when the team gets a ticket to the final round of the Women's World Cup 2023. This is considered a big turning point for women national football. This is not only the happiness of players, but also the pride of Vietnam nation in particular and Southeast Asian countries in general. This achievement once again affirms the good qualities of Vietnamese women from the past to the present. And Vietnamese women are always on the front lines, always rising to the top in many professions, uh, always being symbol but making miracles. Now, women football has conversed and sparked with quintessence. The victory of the Vietnam national women football team is a huge source of motivation for Vietnamese people, especially for the young generation. It builds up ambition and enthusiasm for young people. It influences changes in behavior and communication in daily life, helps people to have a liberal and multi faithed view of everything. It is also a factor that contributes to shaping the culture of the new era changing the fixed mindset of the old era. From that, it can be said, sport affects culture. With football in particular and sports in general, we can see from the fact that sport have built community. By bringing people together, sport plays an important role in societies and it builds solidarity and reminds us of the importance of being connected to a community. It also brings people a sense of cohesion, competitiveness, and personal collision. It helps us to form our own identity, characteristic, and become autonomous individuals, thereby forming a basic culture. And favorite sport depends on the personal thesis and characteristic on each individual. Thus, sport can truly be closely linked to our identity and culture at some point in our life. So sport is an aspect that makes up our culture. Well, that brings us to the end of our presentation. So thank you all for your attention. Okay, thank you very much representatives from Vietnam National University um, to, to Ha Minh Ngoc and Hi, and I'm so sorry, I cannot pronounce your names properly, but I hope you can forgive me for that. Um, thank you very much for that nice presentation about sports. I think all of us here are some, some of kind of into sports a little bit, so we can connect with the sportsmanship and with the sharings of, of unity and things that you shared a while ago. Thank you so much. Are there questions or anything you want um, to share or comments from the group? I think they all agree that sport really unites people. However, I was just amazed with the, the soccer kicking with the skirt with, with your national dress. Like, wow, really? <laughs> it's difficult to, to wear the national dress because it's like slim from, from the, the bottom, right? And when you kick balls, it's quite difficult. So I, wondering, I, I was wondering, how could they kick a ball with that dress? <laughs> but... I think you have to master it, right? Again, you have to persist. <laughs> Thank you so much for your um, um, presentation. Now, if you've got questions. My question. Oh, okay. It's me again. 
<laughs> you know, I'm tired of, you know, situation now. So it's, I go first, then anyone else, right? Oh. So about the Vietnam, right? You say that sport and, you know, sport related activity is the really big part of the Vietnamese cultures, right? Such as, you know, they got everything from football, you know, and to some, you know, mark, right? Some chess and other sport also. Do you think that how, you know, the public, the government promote the citizen to, you know, play sport, do you think is very much, right? How much of the average, you know, Vietnamese involved in the sport yeah, in their daily life? Uh, I think uh, the government have really uh, invest a lot of in sport. Uh, uh, not only the men's sport, but also the women too. And uh, I think it's a right decision because um, you can see the result. And I think in the future, like the government absolutely uh, will invest more in sport. Well, what is the, you know, national competition that just finished, you know, last year or this year? Is it Winter Olympic, right? Yes, from in China, right? Did your country participate in it also? Well, Vietnam didn't have snow, right? Did no, you? Vietnam didn't have snow. <laughs> we is a tropical country and we have, uh, we have four seasons. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So no winter Olympics for China, right? You... Yes, we do have winter, but we don't have snow. Yeah. Just like it's cold in the winter and dry. And what is the next, you know, tropical, you know, normal Olympic game will come in which country again? Do you have any idea? Well, anyway, do you, you know, plan to win the gold medal in the next Olympic, you know, for your country? Is you think? Uh, yes, uh, yes, we think because uh, we have many uh, uh, trustful in our players, and it's a really lucky thing if we can do it and everyone will be happy. But if it didn't, ha if it if doesn't happen, so it's okay. It's okay. All right, because all players have tr uh, try all of. Uh, their effort so everyone will still love them good you can do it you know cheer for vietnam you know yes. thank you thank you Joe, for your questions mm -hmm. great thank you are there any more questions um this isn't really a question sir but it's more of like a commentary on the report so like as miss uh uh, the reporter earlier mentioned to Sir Anand's question. Uh, I'm glad that their government found value in uh, like their you know, the sports field in their you know, country. Um, uh, hopefully, their government will continue to uh, support their uh, their endeavor in you know, and their efforts and endeavor in like the sports in the field because um, cur uh, they're, they're, they're currently wielding results in, like, let's say, uh, as mentioned earlier in the report, uh, the women uh, football team, was it? Uh, they won the, uh, they, they got the chance to enter the World, the World Cup and like hopefully they will also show results there. So yeah, I, I'm just glad that their government uh, found value in uh, investing in, in that particular area in their, uh, Country. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Right. right. And we also think, like, um, a special university such as one with uh, Dr. Yamaguchi here with uh, Nippon Sports Science uh, University, wherein they specialized in sports. Um, mm -hmm. I think not, not a lot of uh, uh, countries have. Um, a university which 
cater to sports, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's part of the university, but not the whole university. Mm -hmm. as... mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So thank you very much uh, for your presentation. Now we move on to the last group of presenters. Um, Rajamangala University of Technology, Lanao. Thank you very much again, Nguyen um, Tuha and Min, Min uh, Ngok and uh, Hai An. But I, I'm, I, I'm not sure if I, could, I, I pronounced it correctly, but um, thank you so much. So let's move on. Are they here from our MUTL? Ah, yes. there they are. Yes. Can you see? Yes, we, we yes. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Pimani Sivatana. My name is Kochakon Jalun Lak. My name is Purisa Jiang Siri. We come from Thailand. We are studying in the second year Department of English for International Communication. Faculty of Business Administration and Liberal Arts at Lashamangala University of Technology Lana Pisanolo, the lower northern region of Thailand. We will present the local sports of Thailand. This is sack race, all Thai people call wing grasshop. It is a race in which competition, competitor stand in sacks up to the waist on it and run forward. We will divide into six topics and I will present in 10 minutes. First, I will talk about history. Second, types of sack race, Third, how to play. Fourth, lose. Fifth, when do you play? And finally, the benefits of Segways. First, I will be talking about history of Segways. Originally running which wearing a sack in Thailand was a traditional sport. In the central region later, people played this sport around Thailand. Running which Wearing sex is a type of sport that makes people fun and joy. It helps players step forward equally and they also have good balance. The running with sex has been adapted from the sport of running wearing a sex because there, are, there was the evidence that the sport of running with sex has originated and competed. In the athletic event of the, Depart the Department of Education in 1902, in the reign of King Rama V, and we call bull running which wearing sack. Two years later, the Department of Education organized it, the running which wearing sack in the Thai of athletic competition and Thai people called wing suam grasop, wing means running, swam means wearing, grasop means sack. At present, wing grasop, all run which wearing sack is still played among, among children or villagers. Among students or villagers on the special events such as New Year celebration or sport day at school. Next, types of segways. There are single learning type and relay list. Single learning type, each contestant is given one sack and must put both feet 
in the sack by using both hands to hold the mouth of the sack tightly. They lie on your back, arranged in rows roughly, spread behind the starting line, bringing your head to the starting line and turning your head towards the finish line. When hearing the signal to start, all the contestants got up, then turned around and ran to the finish line. Whoever arrives to the finish line first is the winner. Related, it is the same as the single running, but it is different when the first competitor of the team runs to the finish line and must run back to the starting point to pass the sack to the next competitor on the team to run until the number of competitors on the team is complete. When the last competitor on the running team reaches the finish line first, that team wins. Next, I will explain how to play. First, play the sack behind the starting line. Players stand ready and upright position. Second, when the signal start playing, let all players hurry to put on the competitive sack. Put your hand on the mouth of the sack and run as quickly as you can to the finish line. Third, whoever reaches the finish line first is the winner. Player, players of all ages, playing equipment, a sack of rice, 30 minutes running distance playing field. Then there are three rules in sack racing. First, players must wear the sack at all times by running inside the sack. Second, if the sack falls off of your hand, you must stop and pull the sack up quickly, but do not let your foot slip off of the sack. And third, the player who reaches the finish line first is the winner, but any violation will be deemed a loss. The next slide, I will show the example video. Uh, if you are interested, you can watch more on YouTube. When do you play? The sack list can be played in any situation, but it is popular to play in sporting events, community sports, or receptions, etc. And the last one is the benefit of sex race. First, create unity among the group if playing at a team. Second, make a group balance. Third, make people fun and joy. And finally, make players good health. These are references. We would like to end this presentation today. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Pinmani, uh, Kochukon, and Puisa for that uh, nice presentation. Uh, we hope we could do it, right, as, as um, an exercise also, to, in addition to the exercise given by um, the NSSU. But we cannot do that because we are in uh, our own places. But how, however, we can practice perhaps once it's opened, right? And are there any questions or comments? Hello. Yes. My fellow Thai people, Kon Thai. <laughs> Finally, that I'm not alone anymore. I'm, you know, discovered there's another Thai, you know, people here. How are you doing? Hello, Sadiqab. 
สวัสดีครับครับสวัสดีค่ะครับ so คําถามที่หนึ่ง one question okay my first question ทำไมวิ่งกระสอบ why is the sack racing you know what's so interesting that you want to represent you know, the top of these Thai cultures right you can choose any sport you can choose you know Muay Thai or maybe football แอร์เซปาตะกอมาวายวิ่งกระสอบ because it's it's easy to prepare material and it's for fun in special event wow <laughs> yes good for you well another question uh, นอกเรื่องหน่อย is not related to the topic right is your university right ราชมังคลาล้านนา and พิษณุโลก where is it located is it located in ล้านนา in พิษณุโลกเลย yes okay where hello can you hear me yes one more please your um ลาชมังคลา University of Technology ลานาพิษณุโลก it is a one of the campus in in ลานา and there are six campuses in ลานาพิษณุโลก is one of the campus in ลานา so it is in the พิษณุโลก is in the lower northern part of Thailand so we uh, we classify as uh, the the north So we we use uh lana. So we oh. uh category in lana also. Yes. <laughs> the main campus is in lana in Chiang Mai, right? Yes, yes. The main campus is in lana Chiang Mai. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Okay, that's also uh, a good um um geographic explanation why lana. Perhaps they're questioning what's lana. It's the north northern part of Thailand. Um, for of Thailand from History, um, you know Thailand 200 years ago is not unified yet so there is a different kingdom right we have the king of Thailand is actually just the king of Ayutthaya and king of Ratanakosin and in the north is the what you call the tributary state you know we conquer Rana and we incorporate you know their culture into unified Thailand so Rana used to be the separate country Separate kingdom from Thailand, you know, but we now unify together, right? Right. So thank you very much. So that's another thing we learn: not only sports, not only presentation, but we also learn geography of places and learn some history or background of another country. So it's really nice to have this kind of uh, forum. This is our first, and please forgive us for a little. Uh, some problems that we encounter today, like the number of participants are lesser. And we hope that next time, and we hope if you really are into presentations and learning more into getting to know others, we could do part two. Some requests because a, a lot of a lot of students, I think, cannot enter today. So they're requesting for part two of this activity. <laughs> if you are interested and maybe we will talk, um, I will uh, ask, um, Consents from the advisors, um, and I would like to thank them also, Miss um, Van Tan Lai from uh, a lecturer from Vietnam National University. Um, we also have uh, Dr. Chini Beth Borha from KMITL, uh, and we also have Dr. Janet Arcana from USPF. And uh, we also have uh, Ajahn Tonghatai Tong Ngam Kham um, from RMUTL in the north of Thailand. And we have um, Associate Professor Dr. Um, Kazuyuki Yamaguchi from NSSU or National uh, Nippon. <laughs> Sports Science University. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. And um, it's without them, um, this activity couldn't uh, be pushed through. Um, so thank you so much. 
uh, are there any and uh, are there any any last words from our um andy yes can i can i say something yes yes please um, well, see, um, I'm a, a teacher at the uh, Nippon Sports Science University from Japan, and thank you so much for you know participating you know uh, this meeting. And unfortunately, um, this time you know many of my friends could not participate in you know this meeting for some reason, and I am hoping that we would have similar you know a meeting uh, uh, hopefully pretty soon you know so that see, everybody can participate in you know this kind of meeting well thank you for participation yes um thank you uh doctor so we we would think of planning again for part two perhaps for those who weren't able to attend uh so we yes, could do definitely. another another group of uh students so that they can also participate a lot of them are are asking actually they sent us notes that they want part two of this activity. And I hope this also helpful for students to get to know also um, learn not only presentations, not only English, but also many things on students' life as well. So they could learn and gain friends with this uh, forum also. And thank you, Dr. Yamaguchi, for initiating this activity. And uh, thank, you. thank you also, um, Ajahn Song Hatai, uh, Van and uh, Dr. Chinebeth and Dr. Um, I think even um, Dr. Um, so Mr. Andy, right? Normally, uh, yes. Normally, this class can host up to how many people for five hundred? Actually, last time we hold up to five hundred, but this time I don't know yeah. what happened. Maybe somebody changed Maybe. the oh, the uh, you know lower limit. Right, you have to change it back. Yeah, to... maybe. So we are sorry because last time we checked, it's more than five hundred were able to join. And this time, like I was shocked this morning when I I turned up, and it's only one hundred. So I said, "Oh, I'm so sorry." We... Actually, I got my friend also who want to you know present with me, but they cannot come in. Right, I'm the only one in my school. Right. I have to yeah, they cannot enter actually yeah so sorry about that and there are many more students who would like to join so perhaps uh, we will plan again uh, with the the lecturers here with me we will plan again for the second uh, round uh, for for this activity so that everybody can participate so again for those who 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 were listening a while ago maybe um please type your name your school and your email address at um uh, uh, the chat box so that we will email to you your certificate of attendance and certificate of presentation for those who presented. So for those who presented, you will get two certificates, a, a certificate of presentation and certificate of attendance, and the rest will be certificate of attendance. That's very nice. Thank you very much. So thank you very much. Have a nice day. And we thank hope you. again to see you <laughs> and we get to know you more. Again, we will be posting this on our YouTube account. Perhaps we will share it with your professors here so they will uh, share it with you guys. And whatever they also do, like we're waiting for, we'll be waiting for uh, the YouTube um, channel also of NSSU for their exercises for us to comment and check. And maybe for IMUTL and uh, VNU also, if you have some uh, things or um, YouTube channels to share for us to comment and participate, share us also so we can. Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much. Have a nice day. And we, we extended time already. So <laughs> good night, thank everyone. You very much. Have a nice day. Thank you so much. Bye. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Andy. Thank yeah. you, everyone. Thank you, sir. Have a good evening, everyone. Love. Thanks. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. 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 We will have this kind of meeting again, right? Okay. Yes, we hope. <laughs> yes. So.